Hey y'all, I'm Sarah Wade. Today I'm gonna to show you a bunch of ways to resize images in Photoshop, including one with artificial intelligence. Are the robots coming for us? Stay tuned to find out. If you wanna follow along in this tutorial, you can download all of the Unsplash photos of cute puppies used in this tutorial for free. Just follow the link in the description. Photoshop has a lot of different ways to resize images. You can find most of them in the image, image size dialog. There's a lot of stuff in here. The thing that I like the most about this dialog is that right inside of it, I can preview and zoom around just by using the pan tool and these little zoom buttons on this preview image. Now you'll notice a lot of stuff up here, right? Typical stuff that you would expect. You can resize uh, by the pixel width. This is what I use most often. I just type in the width and the height that I want, but you can also do it by percentage, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, picas, and columns. Uh, points, picas, and columns are probably most relevant to you if you're a print designer. If you're a print designer, you're gonna wanna make sure you're in 300 pixels per inch rather than 72. Print resolution tends to be 300. 72 tends to be screen resolution. Um, are a dot and a pixel the same thing? For our purposes, most of the time, yes. Then we get into all of this stuff down here, right? So these are basically resampling means that Photoshop is looking at every single pixel and using an algorithm to determine how it's going to add pixels or subtract pixels to make things larger or smaller respectively. So a lot of stuff in here. You can see that some of these have parentheses next to them. That'll let you know what they're best for. For most things, choosing automatic and letting Photoshop make the choice for you, it's going to be a great idea. If you choose automatic and your result is not quite how you anticipated, or maybe you want some smoother gradients in it, you can then go down here and you can choose, say, by cubic with smooth gradients. But most of the time, I find that automatic works pretty well. We've also got a couple of presets for you in here. Instead of choosing custom, if you just want to say pick something standard, you can choose down here and see all of this stuff. You can also load your own presets, assuming that you have saved your own presets. So that is something to keep in mind. So those are the basics of the image resize dialog. Finally, if you want to just sort of take the pixels that you have and squish them together or spread them out. You can uncheck this resample. I wouldn't recommend doing that uh, because again, that's just gonna take what you have and either squish it or stretch it out. It's not necessarily gonna be the best result, but that is an option here for you. Next, we're gonna take a look at some ways to resize an image without actually resizing the file that you're working in. Let's say I've got this new cute puppy and I just wanna add some space around it, right? Like maybe I wanna draw a border, maybe I wanna add some other images around it, make a photo collage. Uh, you can basically do anything you want, but what you don't wanna do is start covering up the puppy, right? So what I can do to do that is I can go to image canvas size. And what that is gonna do is basically let me change the canvas that this image is a part of. So the different parts here, obviously we've got width, height, again, you've got those choices, pixels, percent, inches, centimeters, and so on. Um, I'm gonna stick with pixels for now, but let's say I wanna add about, well, actually let's try inches. Let's say I wanna add about an inch around the outside of this. So I, let's say right now I've got a width of 42 inches. I want an inch on either side, an inch top and bottom. So I wanna change this to 44 inches and 58 inches. And now I'm looking at this little icon here, right? It's a dot in the center. That dot indicates your image. So if I were to put it here, it's gonna add all the space to the right and the bottom but if I click in the middle, it's gonna add it all around, which is what I want. So depending on how you want to add that space to your file, you can play with that icon here, just clicking on it, it's gonna change the way that the image is resized. I want it to be in the center and I can choose what I want this extension to be. So I'm just gonna choose, let's choose white for now, but you can choose you know, foreground color, background color, that's gonna choose what's set over here as your foreground and background. Let's just choose white and hit okay. 
and you can get an idea of what that's doing. So this is a big image. One inch is actually pretty darn small relative to that large size that we were starting with, but it gave, it gave me that nice border that I wanted to work with. And if I were to add another layer, I could start adding stuff in that border or even adding it in this layer. Now, you can also resize an image while using the crop tool. So if I select the crop tool here, I will get some options up here and I'm gonna choose that I want this to be 1024 by 768. And no matter what I do to this crop window, it's gonna maintain the right aspect ratio. I can click inside and move that image around, right? If I click on the corners, I can change the overall kind of size of this image that I'm taking out. I'm gonna just center this dog's face right here. And when I click this check mark, that's gonna crop it. Now, I've chosen 1024 by 768, but I could also choose an aspect ratio and get the pixels that I have. So not necessarily resizing, but if I choose one of these, it is going to resize it when it crops. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that check mark. And I've got now here, a 1024 by 768 image of just the puppy's face. What if I want to actually kick out an image, maybe to share with a friend or maybe to add to my Instagram profile? I don't wanna actually change this file though. I just wanna kick out something separate that's a different size. I can do that too. If I go up here to file, I have export. I have two options here that are going to be relevant. The quick export is PNG. That's just going to basically take exactly what you have here and save it as a separate PNG file. So if you're working in a big PSD with lots of layers, you just want a quick single layered PNG. That's what you would select. But I want to make something a different size. So I'm going to choose export as and in this dialogue, I've got a whole bunch of stuff to pick from. A lot of this looks familiar, right? So we saw already these different image formats. We can choose PNG, JPG, GIF. We can adjust for whether or not we wanna keep transparency. I don't have any transparency in this, so I'm gonna uncheck it. But if I did, this is where I would select to use that. Um, again, image size, we've got width, height, scale, a lot of the same options in there for those different ways to do it. There's only one automatic choice in here. I'm gonna leave that set, but again, you know what to do if you're not quite happy with it. Um, again, we've got the canvas size here. So now, if we wanted to kick out an image that was exactly like this, but a different image size, and also add canvas around it at the same time, we could do that here. So we could set this width to say, Let's say I wanna make this guy 300 wide. That's gonna make it 395 tall. That's telling me the scale, it's 9%, but I want the canvas size to be 400 wide. And let's say 500 tall. And you can see in the preview, it's adding space around that, right? So if I wanna add this nice little frame to what I'm gonna put on my Instagram or whatever, I can do that all in here in this one dialogue. Metadata, that's going to either get rid of it or include it. If you downloaded an image from Unsplash, like I did this one, it's likely gonna have metadata that includes some information about the photographer, the date the photo was taken, maybe some copyright and licensing stuff. I think it's always a good idea to include that, but again, you don't always have it and you don't have to if you really don't want to. You can choose your color space here, whether you have an embedded profile that you're working with or you wanna just convert it to sRGB. I'm gonna just leave that checked at the default. And if I look over here on the left-hand side, I've got some options here for adding a suffix to this if I wanna do that. So this is 9%. That doesn't necessarily equate to any of these. It's pretty close to 0.01x. So if I select that, it's going to autom automatically add that suffix to the file name. This is actually, it looks like 9%. So I'm not actually gonna select any of these. It's not exactly one of these numbers, but if I were making it twice the height, twice the width, I could choose one of these and automatically add that to the file name. We're just gonna leave it at one X, which means no suffix. Um, we're making a completely new image. So let's hit that export and it's gonna ask me where I wanna keep it. I wanna keep it right here. I actually did this just a minute ago before I recorded. So I'm just gonna select that and overwrite that file uh, because I want it to be called IG dog. Let's just say save. And now if I go and open that file, I can see I've got my IG dog. If I go to the image 
size. I can see that it's 400 by 500, just how I wanted, but it added that white space because I told it to add canvas when it exported. So I got exactly what I want. It's gonna look great on my socials. All right, let's hit cancel and let's pull this off and just take a look at it side by side. Okay, so we've got our little dog and the original that we started with, and this all happened on an export, did not change the file that we were exporting from, which is fantastic. And there's one more way to do this. It's actually going to be a little bit different than what we just looked at, and it's a legacy method. So I don't know how much longer it's gonna be in Photoshop, but if we go to, oops, file, export, save for web, that's going to bring up a dialog box very similar to what we just saw, but the difference is we've got some different options here, right? Now it's taking a minute because this is a big image. Remember it was like something like 42 inches wide at 72 DPI or 42 inches tall. A lot of pixels to process here. And why it's taking a minute is because it's giving me a four up preview, right? So this is the last set of settings that I was comparing. It's got the original here and I can choose four different options to compare side by side. So if I pan around in here and I wanna just look at how that dog's eye is gonna look at all these different compression levels, then I can start choosing. I can say this one is PNG 24, but what if I wanna see what it looks like as a, well, let's see, right now it's a JPEG 30 quality. What if I want a JPEG very high? And you'll see it's updating that image and you can see the difference there. So whichever one you click on, and it's behaving a little bit slowly because this is such a big image, but it's gonna let you change those settings and you can compare side by side. So you can see that the original is a little bit sharper than this JPEG compressed version which is sharper than this 10% quality JPEG, right? So depending on the type of image, you may or may not want to choose any of these different types. And you, again, you can compare them side by side with different settings, different color settings, um, different compression levels. Um, it's intended for website developers to be able to make images very small file sizes. Um, but again, there you saw that we have a newer way to kind of do this with the export as. So again, here you can choose the image size that you wanna output. If I just wanna output 500 wide, let's say, it's gonna give me a little bit of a preview of that. And again, you can choose all of the compression levels in here. It's gonna tell you the percentage that you're outputting and so on. And then when you hit save, it's going to um, just ask you where, where you wanna put it. It's gonna save whichever one of these is selected. So I've selected the JPEG compression 80 quality, but if I wanted to do one of these others, like the PNG, if I select this one and hit save, it's gonna kick out that PNG 24 at those settings and it's gonna look more like that, okay. Love this method, but like I said, it's legacy may or may not continue to be a part of Photoshop. I hope you've learned a lot so far. And if you really wanna learn Photoshop, check out Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed, part of the School of Motion core curriculum. And if you're already good with Photoshop, but you wanna level up your design skills, check out Design Bootcamp, which will get you designing beautiful storyboards and style frames in no time. Ready to animate your designs? Try After Effects Kickstart to learn to make things move. Links are in the description. Okay, now let's see how we can resize without changing our source file. Let's talk about that super cool, artificially intelligent way to resize images that I promised you way back in the beginning of this tutorial. We are gonna look at how to do this with Adobe Sensei, which is a magical robot from space. Actually, it's not, it's, it's just a bunch of computer stuff that I don't completely understand, but it's very, very cool. So let's take a look. If I go up here to filters, I can then choose neural filters. Now this is going to pop up this whole side panel here, right? Now I've already got super zoom installed, which is the one we're going to use. But if I didn't have it installed and clicked on it, it would show you something like this. You hit that download bu button, it takes a couple minutes, it installs it. It's basically a plugin for Photoshop. It's pretty automatic, and once you get it installed, you'll see it in your list the next time you open Photoshop. I'm gonna enable it by just flipping this little switch. If you freshly installed it, it will be automatically enabled for you. Okay, so I've got my dog image here, and let's say I want to make a really nice close-up image of just the dogs. Well, let's let's zoom it first and then we'll get that panned around. So again, you've got this, you can sort of pan around. Once I zoom in, you'll see that pan becomes active. 
And let's say I just want to, let's do a 3x zoom, right? That's a lot. If we were just resizing this image the normal way, it wouldn't look quite as good. Now you'll see this processing on device has popped up over here. That's basically Photoshop telling me like, hey, I gotta do some stuff here. I'm doing my magical, artificially intelligent neural network processing makes sense, right? Like we're asking it to make three times as many pixels wide and tall for this image. That's going to affect how long it's going to take. It also depends on your computer. So, you know, you might not want to do a 20 X zoom of an image just for fun, especially if you're working on your 10 year old laptop. So keep that in mind. Um, and let's take a look at these options here while it's working. I can choose to enhance image details and I do want to do that because I think this is a cool looking dog and I just want to enhance the dog's details. Uh, remove JPEG artifacts. So if you've got a JPEG image, this actually is a JPEG image. That JPEG compression process often leaves artifacts. Sometimes they're not very noticeable, but when you start super zooming an image, they can become a lot more noticeable. So if you have issues with that, you can check box this remove artifacts and it will try to deal with that for you and enhance face details. So this neural network was probably trained on humans most certainly. So if you've got a human face, definitely check that button. It may or may not have been trained on dogs. Uh, we don't know, but if you could check that button and see, maybe it will automatically know how to pick out the dog's face and enhance those details for you. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Finally, you've got this, are you satisfied with the results? These networks are always being trained, right? And Adobe wants to help it learn better. So if you get an image that you don't like, say no, and Adobe will sort of categorize that and retrain the algorithm so that it gets better and better and better all the time. So very cool, brand new feature here. I'm going to pause this recording and let this finish, and then we will take a look at a side by side comparison. OK, I'm all done processing this image, and now let's take a look at what we've got down here. We've got a few different things. We can choose where we want to output this right now. We can say whether we want to output it to a new document or a new layer. I'm not sure why this window popped up super tiny up here, but I'm going to choose new document uh, because I want to pull this up side by side and compare. So let's go ahead and and hit OK. OK, it's given me a new untitled document. It's opened that up for me in Photoshop. Now we can take a look at these side by side. Let's just rip this one off. And we can see side by side, right? Like, so one of these dogs is much bigger than the other one. And if I pan down and put it here, so we made a three X image, right? This is looking pretty good. Let's just click off of this one for a second. And let's see what happens if we do a normal resize with in this image, the plain old one that we started with. And let's just go to image, image size, and let's do percent. And let's make it 300% and see the difference between these results. Okay, so this is plain old image resizing and new neural filter filter resizing. And actually this plain old image resizing one, it doesn't really look too bad, but you'll notice that in the neural filter one, things just look a little bit smoother, a little bit sharper. Like if you look at around the dog's mouth here, that gets a little bit funky and it's just a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer in this neural filter one. Now, sometimes things don't always go as planned, right? Like you can see that, you know, some of this stuff here, like there's a little bit of like a, it's either a piece of snow or a piece of fur that's very prominent in this neural filter resized image. And it's less prominent. It kind of blends into the fur a little bit more and the, the old school resizing. So depending what you're going for, you can sort of try this process out, try the different settings, see where you end up. And of course, let Adobe know whether you were happy with the result or not. Since this created a new image, I can go ahead and save this as whatever I want, wherever I want. If you have a ton of images to process, let's say you took 150 vacation photos and you want to resize them all to be the perfect size to 
share on your social media or put them in a photography portfolio. And you don't want to actually take the time to open every single image in Photoshop and resize them one by one. Photoshop has you covered there too. You can go to file scripts and then open the image processor and you'll get this window, which basically lets you do a few things. You can choose to, let's say you have a hundred images open in Photoshop, wouldn't recommend that, but you could do it maybe if you have a good computer. Uh, you can select to use the open images or in here, you hit the select folder. You can select a folder anywhere on your computer where you've got all the images. It's gonna resize every single thing in that folder. And you can ask it to open it first if you wanna apply some settings to it, or you can just resize it and Photoshop will do it all in the background. So right here, you can select where you wanna save them in the same location or a different one. And finally, you can pick. You wanna do JPG, PSD, or TIFF. And then you can check right here the key resize to fit. You can type in your pixel width and height. So if you want every image in that folder to be the same width and height, go for it. This will do it. Finally, you can hit your preferences down here. And um, that's just if you want to run any other actions. Like if you set up another action in Photoshop, something like adjusting the brightness and contrast, you could say run action here, select the action that you've already set up and add that, um, then hit the run button and Photoshop will do all those things in the background and you will have an entire folder full of resized images. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can teach you even more design and animation tips. Head to schoolofmotion.com to learn more about our interactive online curriculum and let us know if you have any questions. Hope to see you in class.